Welcome to another CCRN practice review question video. This one focuses on GI practice part two. So let's get started. Question 11. Upon your assessment of your patient who has pancreatitis, you find the following values, a temperature of 37.1 degrees Celsius, a BP of 98 over 64, a heart rate of 110 per minute, and a respiratory rate of 28 per minute while her SpO2 is 88% on 2 liters nasal cannula. Her labs are WBCs, 19,000, hemoglobin at 8.9, hematocrit, 39%, sodium level 144, potassium, 3.1, and a calcium level of 7.7, .7, while her glucose is 224. Your remaining assessment reveals lower left lobe crackles of the lungs and her abdomen with the colon sign presenting. Besides pancreatitis, what else do you think your patient may have? A. Sears, hemorrhagic pancreatitis, MODs, and needing fluids. B. Hemorrhagic shock, stress hyperglycemia, hypoxemia, and needing blood. C. Dehydration. ARDS, stress hyperglycemia, and needing intubation, or D, hypovolemic shock, diabetes, severe sepsis, and needing antibiotics. And the answer is A, Sears, hemorrhagic pancreatitis, MODs, and needing fluids. Your patient has Sears because of increased heart rate, respiratory rate, and WBCs. Due to the colon sign, your patient most likely has hemorrhagic pancreatitis with signs of MODs by the low SpO2 and the low blood pressure. Fluids are needed related to the massive fluid shifts and acute pancreatitis. This patient does not have diabetes and does not need antibiotics. However, she is at risk of ARDS but does not have bilateral infiltrations or refractory hypoxemia. Question 11. A new patient just arrived in the hospital, status post-acute abdominal trauma. The patient is now experiencing Kerr's sign. Which of the following may be the cause of Kerr's sign? A. Diaphragmatic irritation. B. Liver contusion. C. Ruptured kidney. Or D. Ruptured bladder. And the answer is A. Diaphragmatic irritation. Trauma that causes splenic rupture also causes diaphragmatic irritation and subsequent referred pain to the left shoulder, which is also known as Kerr's sign. The other choices do not cause Kerr's sign. Question 13. Your coworker goes on a break and asks you to look out for her patients. One of her patients then calls you to the room with a complaint of Something doesn't feel right in my abdomen. After auscultating the patient's bowel sounds, which of the following is present in an early mechanical bowel obstruction? A. Normal bowel sounds. B. Hypoactive bowel sounds. Hyperactive bowel sounds. Or D. Absent bowel sounds. And the answer is C. Hyperactive bowel sounds. In an early bowel obstruction, the bowel sounds become hyperactive, and while in a late obstruction, the bowel sounds become hypoactive all the way to absent. Question 14. You are assisting on the admission of a new patient into the ICU for the diagnosis of bleeding esophageal varices and hypovolemic shock. Which of the following closely resembles compensation for the hypovolemic shock. A. Vasodilation. B. Capillary fluid shift into the interstitial spaces. C. Decrease in renin secretion. Or D. Increase in reabsorption of sodium and water. D. Increase in the absorption of sodium and water. With volume depletion, aldosterone is released by the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism, which allows extra sodium and water to be reabsorbed in an attempt to increase the vascular volume. The other choices are not signs of a compensatory response. 
Question 15. You suspect acute appendicitis with a bowel perforation being present in your new patient. Which of the following answers closely describes that of a peritoneal irritation? A. Becoming increasingly severe. B. Generalized to the abdominal area. C. Greater than a six hour duration. Or D. Lessons while lying still with both knees in a flexed position. And the answer is D. It lessens while lying still with both knees in a flexed position. Peritonitis can cause exacerbation of abdominal pain upon movement. Therefore, lying still with the knees in a flexed position relaxes the abdomen and helps prevent the movement, therefore helping to reduce the abdominal pain. Question 16. The patient just admitted to your unit has abdominal distension, complaints of dull abdominal pain, low-pitched bowel sounds, and a recent change in the patient's bowel habits. The patient is experiencing which diagnosis? A. Large bowel obstruction B. Acute pancreatitis C. Small bowel obstruction or D. Acute appendicitis And the answer is A. Large bowel obstruction With the low pitch sounds and change in bowel habits, the patient most likely has a large bowel obstruction. A small bowel obstruction presents high-pitched bowel sounds and dull pain is not present in pancreatitis, in which a boring type pain is more typical. On to the next question, question 17. The medical doctor just ordered a vasopressin drip for your patient who just recently developed an acute GI bleed. After starting the vasopressin drip, what is now a priority assessment for your patient? A. Monitor for bowel obstruction. B. Monitor for a cardiac arrhythmia. C. Monitor the patient for hypotension. Or D. Monitor the ECG for ST changes. And the answer is D. Monitor the ECG for ST changes. It is important when starting a vasopressin drip on the patient that the patient may experience cardiac ischemia, which may also result in the ST changes, as well as chest pain. A cardiac arrhythmia can occur, however, the symptoms of ischemia present more commonly and usually before an arrhythmia can occur. Question 18. Your patient, a 29-year-old male, recently got into an altercation that led to a fight. From the fight, he sustained multiple rib fractures bilaterally, he also assess multiple abrasions on his face and chest. Now, he is complaining of a sharp left shoulder pain while at rest in bed. Which of the following should you assess for? A. A pulmonary contusion B. Rotator cuff injury C. Fractured left scapula or D. Ruptured spleen And the answer is D. Ruptured spleen this is due to the symptoms at rest. All of the other choices typically do not display symptoms at rest. More signs to look for in a ruptured spleen is absent bowel sounds and a distended abdomen. Question 19. With providing your patient with enteral feeding, which of the following is contraindicated? A. Ensuring free water is administered. B. Keeping the head of bed flat. C using a small bore feeding tube, or D, check for gastric residuals every four hours. B, keeping the head of bed flat. The head of bed should be at least 30 degrees or higher as to help reduce the risk of aspiration. The other choices are indicated in this scenario. Question 20. You receive report on your new patient and discover that the patient has upper GI bleeding, hypotension, and tachycardia. What of the following labs would be most expected? A. Elevated BUN, elevated serum sodium, B. A decrease in PT level and metabolic acidosis, C. Decreased sodium and an elevated PTT, or D. Decreased white blood cell count and elevated platelets. 
And the answer is A, elevated BUN with an elevated serum sodium. This is a presentation of volume depletion and factitious dehydration demonstrated by an elevated BUN level and an increased sodium level. Once the volume is restored, the levels will normalize. Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to watch other CCRN review videos on YouTube and on lifelongnursing.com, which also has more great free content. Remember, learn everything.